Welcome to Asia Science Institute. In this video, we are going to look at current affairs for prelims 2019. So this current affairs is the topic wise keywords which have been prepared. So for each category, each sub topic in current affairs, we have prepared the subtopics and keywords in them. So this in this video, we are going to look at SNT. So there are various topics under it. In this, we are going to look at Nobel Prize. So SNT means uh, Nobel Prizes in Physics, Chemistry and Biology which have been awarded for the year 2018. So this is the PDF file which you can download. So this is regarding the keywords you can see for SNT, Nobel. So for, for Medicine, Physics, Chemistry and also overall the list of Nobel Prize winners for 2018 is, is in front of you. So in Medicine, Nobel Prize was awarded for discovery of cancer therapy by inhibition of negative immune regulation. So we will understand what is it all about. In physics, there were two US and Japan science, uh, researchers who were immunologists who were awarded the Nobel Prize in medicine. In physics, it's for the method of generating high intensity ultra short, op ultra short optical pulses in the field of laser physics. So they were scientists from France, US and Canada. And in chemistry, the award for two, uh, two, two researchers from US and one from UK was for control of evolution and use the control for you, the understood control for evolution and used it for purposes that bring the greatest benefit to humankind. Also in literature, you should know in 2018, no Nobel Prize was awarded for literature because of the controversy with respect to the committee, the Nobel Prize Committee for Literature. It was also linked to the hashtag MeToo movement. So there was no Nobel Prize in literature this year. For peace, it was for a person, Dennis Mukwege from Congo and Nadia Murad who belongs to Germany. So for the effort to end the use of sexual violence as a weapon of war and armed conflict. So Nadia Murad, she's presently in Germany, but then she is an Iraqi Yazidi uh, minority in Iraq who is persecuted. So it's regarding their efforts to end use of sexual violence as a weapon of war and armed conflict. And in economics, the award went to two U.S. economists for their work on climate change and the endogenous growth theory. So we are going to look at the three science-related Nobel Prizes in this video. Also, you should know about the history of Nobel. The Nobel Prize is named after and was started by Alfred Nobel, the Swedish chemist who invented the dynamite. He established this prize in 1895 and initially it was awarded for five fields, that is physics, chemistry, physiology or medicine, literature and peace. So the economic sciences, the sixth category for which Nobel Prize is awarded every year now was started in 1968 by Sweden's Central Bank. And you should also know one important fact that Nobel Prize is awarded every year on December 10th. So it was in October when the Nobel Prizes were announced. The award ceremony happens on 10th of December, which is the death anniversary of Alfred Nobel. Not the birth anniversary, the death anniversary. And this is the four topics which we'll cover under this. Nobel Prize. So, Nobel Prize in Medicine. So, this was for research into body's natural defense against cancer. So, it was for two immunologists, James Allison of the USA and Tasuku Honjo of Japan. They won the Nobel Prize in Medicine. So, the traditional forms of cancer treatment directly target cancer cells, that how cancer cells can be eliminated. But the research was, which these two immunologists undertook was not to directly target cancer cells, but to enhance and help the patient's own immune system tackle the cancer more quickly. So, the award-winning discovery which they did led to treatments targeting proteins made by some immune system cells that acted as a break on the body's natural defenses killing cancer cells. So there were these proteins which were not allowing the body to fight cancer cells. So if these proteins are targeted, then body will be better able to target cancer cells. So this therapy has now revolutionized cancer treatment, has, has fundamentally changed the way we view cancer and how it can be managed. So it was in 1995 that Dr. James Ellison, he identified CTLA-4 molecule as an inhibitory receptor on T cells. So here you can see these T cells are a type of white blood cells that play a central role in body's natural immunity to diseases. So they, he identified this molecule which is an inhibitory receptor. Inhibiting means not allowing. So inhibitory receptor on the T cells. So T cell is a white blood cell which fights diseases. So this Dr. Ellison, he realized the potential of releasing the break and thereby unleashing our immune cell to 
attack the tumors. If this inhibitory receptor is eliminated, it could help the body to fight cancer. The other scientists also, Dr. Honjo, around that same time discovered a protein on immune cells, the ligand PD-1. So, and eventually realized it, it also worked as a break, but it acted in a different way. So, both of them understood that these breaks on the body's immune cells, the T cells, which do not allow the body to fight cancer cells as such. So, they release these breaks. They understood that these breaks are released, then body can better fight cancer. So, there are cancer patients who have been successfully treated with immune checkpoint blocking. So, this is the method which they helped develop because of their discovery. So that is the 2000 Nobel Prize in 2018 Nobel Prize in Medicine. So here you can see the image showing this is the cancer cell and this is the T cell, the white blood cell which is going to fight the cancer cells. But then there is this break protein here. So this results in the T cell not being able to fight the cancer cell. So you should understand cancer also it's a group of diseases caused by uncontrolled cell growth. So this uncontrolled cell growth which evades the immune system. So proteins on T cells actually act as break for the immune response. So unleash, if these breaks are unleashed then the immune system can attack these cancer cells. So here you can see there is this uh, the development you can see Alice and Honjo their work are shown here. So this is the antibody which is added. You can see the break is removed. So this is the cancer cell and this is the T cell. So this CTLA actually is removed. So the break is removed. When this break is removed, they can target the cancer cells and fight it. This is it. And you can again here you can see this is PDA1 which was the break which was also when it is removed. So if an antibody is added, the break is removed and the T cells can fight cancer cells. So here you, know, you can see this is the antibody added that can bind to this CTLA4 and blocks its function. So it allows the immune system to attack the cancer cell. And here also in the same manner. So here you can see why does this research matter? This research established an entirely new approach to treat cancer. Positive results have been observed in cancer patients and there are a large number of clinical trials underway against many cancer types. So that is the Nobel Prize you can see. So there are various ways to treat cancer, surgery, radiation, chemotherapy and this method is called immunotherapy for which the Nobel Prize has been award, awarded now. So this you should understand. This is further explanation about how this immunotherapy works. So cancer immunotherapy is a method that helps cells of the immune system identify and attack cancer cells. So this is regarding the T cells you should know. So T cells as we discussed are a type of white blood cells that can identify and kill infected, damaged or cancerous cells. So each T cell has this claw-like receptor which is called an antigen receptor. So these can recognize and lock onto antigens. So any antigen which is foreign or an abnormal protein fragment as such or you know or a cancer cell as such. So such are recognized by this antigen receptor. So this antigen receptor is there so that it can understand which antigen has to be targeted. So these T cells actually have to be activated. So there are this activation takes place you can see by a specialized cell this is the green cell which is shown here which was shown in the previous image as such too so this is the activation cell so here so this activation cell actually activates the t cells by presenting with the antigen so t cells must be activated before it can find and attack the cancer cells so this specialized cell presents the t cell with the antigen so the antigen receptor accepts it and understands, you know, so antigen from the cancer cell is also presented by this activating cell. So the activated T cell now understands which is the protein, which is the antigen which has to be targeted. And there's also co-stimulator protein which is coming to it from the activating cell. So then with this, it comes and starts fighting, hunting for the cancer cells and killing them. So here you can see, so this is the cancer cell. And this, it already has this antigen, active, you know, active, it's activated. But what happens is cancer cells can avoid destruction by taking advantage of a switch on the T cells called the immune checkpoint. So there is this switch, immune checkpoint. So T cells, on the T cells, so this checkpoint can shut down the T cell and suppress the immune response. So that's what the cancer cells do. They shut down the immune response. So this immune checkpoint which is there has to be, 
you know not allowed by cancer cells to be deactivated so there are these checkpoint inhibitors so drugs known as checkpoint inhibitors can physically block the checkpoint so when the checkpoint is blocked then cancer cells cannot uh, attach to it and deactivate the t cells so which then the immune system is free to attack the cancer cells so single t cell actually can kill thousands of cancer cells so four checkpoint inhibitors have been approved by us fda to and for this treatment called immunotherapy so this is the research by these two scientists james ellison and dasuko honjo both in their 70s one from us one from japan so it's say, it is said immunotherapy is not the present of cancer care it is the future so it is going to be the future of cancer care presently it is used we generally when you know in case cancer cases we hear of chemotherapy and other treatments only used so this is the future of cancer treatment actually so they have been awarded for the long standing scientific work in this field which will be the future of cancer treatment the next is laser pioneers win physics nobel so this is regarding nobel prize in physics which was awarded in 2018 so this is awarded to three scientists including a woman scientist and this is the first time that a woman scientist has awarded has been awarded the nobel prize in physics in 55 years so after 55 years again a woman has been awarded nobel prize in physics and she has been awarded for inventing optical lasers so these awards have gone to the scientists for they have paved the way for advanced precision instruments used in corrective eye surgery so this is arthur ashkin of us who won one half of the 9 million swedish krona award and the other two are gerard moro of france and donna strickland of canada so they shared the other half so mr ashkin of usa is 96 year old now and he has been honored for his invention of optical tweezers so these are optical tweezers that grab particles atoms viruses and other living cells with their laser beam fingers so these are the optical tweezers we'll see the detail as such too so they are, so he was able to use radiation pressure of light to move physical objects so this was his discovery and another major breakthrough which happened was the that he captured living bacteria with these optical tweezers without harming them that was in 1987 so he is the oldest winner of nobel prize now he is 96 year old now and the other two scientists mr moro and mr miss strickland donna strickland of canada so they have been awarded the nobel prize miss donna strickland becomes third woman to win nobel prize in physics in history of nobel prize and first after 55 years so these two have won the award for helping develop a method to generate ultra short optical pulses so this is used in corrective eye surgery now this technique so what is it all about we'll see that in detail below so where you can see the so miss Mo, mr moro was also involved in building this extreme light infrastructure project so this extreme light infrastructure project is uh, believed to be one of the world's most powerful lasers so that is uh, you know the apollo so it is uh, hoped that one day this will help deal with nuclear waste treating tumors and also clearing debris in space these are ex this is extreme light infrastructure project to develop world's most powerful lasers the apollo here you can see the detail given about the three physicists the nobel prize in physics was awarded to them so this is optical tweezers explained and also short and intense laser pulses you know, uh, explained as such too so mr ashkin you can see realized that laser beam can move small particles so he illuminated a sphere using laser and got it to move so he observed that the sphere sphere moved towards the beam center where intensity is maximum so here you can see this is the laser beam so this is the laser beam center and this is the focal point the lens is located here so we when, when we focus the laser beam with a lens the sphere got trapped in the in the focal point of the lens so the sphere you can see this is a sphere it got trapped here so this method can be used to trap small particles such as bacteria and they became to be known as optical tweezers its use is in studying biological processes such as studying individual proteins molecular motors dna or inner life of cell to observe turn cut push pull small particles without touching them 
So these are the optical tweezers. And this is the short and intense laser lights which were developed. So here you can see how it was done is shown here too. So you should know about laser light. Laser light can be emitted in short pulses, but they can't be amplified beyond a point without destroying the material. So what was done by the two scientists, Trickland and Moru, were they developed this new technique known as chirped pulse amplification. So this helped solve the problem. So this chirped pulse amplification, what was it? You can see step one is here you can see the short pulse from the laser, you know, was stretched in time. So this is a creating parallel pulse stretcher. So this pulse was stretched in time and its peak power then is much lower. So the material is not destroyed. So the pulse is stretched, which reduces its peak power. So this is shown here, you can see. So you know, the pulse amplification, you can see. So it's amplified. Uh, is the it's stretching so that it gets lower down so then what happens the third is the stretched pulse is amplified so this amplified pulse is then squeezed again so in the end as more light is packed together within a tiny area the intensity of the pulse increases dramatically and then next step is the pulse is compressed and its intensity increased dramatically so that is the whole thing so first it is uh, you know stretched then amplified then compressed again. So that's what happens. So this helps in getting intense pulse as such. So this you know, intensity increased dramatically. So these are called chirped pulse amplification. So the use of it is that it is possible to see events that previously appeared to be instantaneous. So ultra sharp laser makes it possible to cut or drill extremely precise holes in materials also, even in living matter. So that is the intensity of these pulses. So this is the development. And also you should know about the uh, Nobel Prize in Physics that has been awarded earlier to Marie Curie too. She was radioactivity pioneer, two-time Nobel laureate. So she won her, the Nobel Prize twice. So she does discovered two elements, founded two medical research centers also and won two Nobel Prizes. She invented mobile x-ray units also which saved countless lives during World War I. That was Marie Curie. And then another Nobel Prize winner in physics was Maria Guppert Mayer. So despite spending most of the, her career work in career working in unpaid positions, she made huge contributions to both theoretical and chemical physics. So her biggest breakthrough was a mathematical model for the structure of nuclear shells, for which she earned the Nobel Prize in physics. So these are the two former women Nobel Prize winners, Marie Curie and Maria Guppert Mayer. And Miss Donna becomes the third Nobel Prize winner, woman Nobel Prize winner in physics. Then next is scientists sue with just sound waves. So this is a separate news, but it's related to optical tweezers. So it is clubbed together here. So this is regarding how scientists have successfully used sound waves. So this is not about light, but this is about sound. So sound waves have been used to levitate and manipulate multiple objects simultaneously for the first time. So what is this system is of sewing, like how a thread sews a piece into a fab, you know, into a piece of fabric. Same way now sound waves have been used. That is called sound is called acoustics. So system could be used to acoustically stitch up an internal injury or deliver drug to target organs. So this, you know, the ultrasound waves which are used. So sound exerts a small acoustic force. And by turning up the volume of ultrasound, ultrasonic waves too high pitched for, um, if it's too high pitched for humans to hear, scientists create a sound wheel strong enough to move small objects. So this is scientists from UK and from Spain who have attached two millimetric polystyrene spheres to a piece of thread and used acoustic tweezers to sew the thread into a piece of a fabric. So this system can also simultaneously control the 3D movement of up to 25 such spheres in air. So these are acoustic tweezers. So the way we have optical tweezers, which we just discussed, for which the Nobel Prize in Physics uh, has been awarded for 2018, these are acoustic tweezers and they have similar capabilities. So the optical tweezers use laser, they use sound waves. So that is it. The, uh, the thing is the same, they act like tweezers, they can trap and transport microparticles. So acoustic tweezers, they are said to have an edge over optical systems too when it comes to operating within human tissues because lasers only travel through transparent media. 
so it's tricky the application in biological tissues but when sound is there ultrasound is routinely used even in pregnancy scans and kidney stone treatment and they can safely and non-invasively penetrate biological tissues so acoustic tweezers have much more you know much more potential as such too for, for applications in human and biological tissues also it is said that acoustic devices are one lakh times more power efficient than optical systems so that is also an added advantage so here you can see this is again regarding the same nobel prize in uh, physics which was awarded optical tweezers and laser amplification which is detailed out here so the significance of these optical tweezers is also given here they became standard equipment for studying biological processes and these ultra short and intense laser pulses can illuminate molecular atomic processes which are used in corrective eye surgery and this is the entire process detailed out again over here which we just discussed the next is trio gets chemistry nobel for harnessing evolution of evolution to produce novel critics so these are two american chemists and one britain one from britain who have won the nobel prize for chemistry for harnessing the power of evolution so these novel proteins which they have developed they are used in everything from environmentally friendly detergents and biofuels to cancer drugs so the three scientists have been named here francis arnold of usa george smith of usa and gregory winter of britain so they have been awarded the, the nobel prize in chemistry for pioneering sciences in science in enzymes and antibodies so the fruits of their work include world's top selling prescription medicine the antibody injection called humira which is used for treating rheumatoid arthritis and other autoimmune diseases so miss arnold here Frances Arnold of USA. She is the fifth woman to win Chemistry Nobel Prize, too. and she was awarded one half of the one million dollar prize, while Mr. Smith and Mr. Mentor shared the other half. So we have a woman winning the Nobel Prize in Chemistry as well. So a woman from Canada, Donna Strickland, she won the Nobel Prize in Physics, the third in the history to win a Nobel Prize in Physics, and this is Miss Frances Arnold of USA who won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry this year. So she is the fifth woman to win the Chemistry Nobel Prize. So the work is detailed out here. You can see. So here you can see. So first one, mimicking evolution. So evolution has solved complex chemical problems. For example, fish can swim in polar oceans, and they can develop antifreeze proteins. So this is evolution. So Arnold used this concept to build better enzymes. So enzymes are catalysts which help speed up chemical processes. that is understood that is what is studied in school about enzymes what we understand so they help in speeding up chemical processes like digestion or clotting of blood so more effective the enzymes quicker the process so this is understood so mimicking evolution to build better enzymes was what was done so here you can see the flow chart you know of how miss frances arnold achieved this you can see she introduced random mutation in the dna of the enzyme so this is the dna of the enzyme so random mutations were introduced and the genes were inserted into a bacteria which produced randomly mutated enzymes so here you can see this is the second stage enzymes you know randomly mutated enzymes were produced by bacteria and then the, the in the third stage the mutated enzymes were tested those that were most efficient as cat at catalyzing the desired chemical reaction were selected so this was a random process through which these best uh, you know, enzymes were selected rest were discarded so this process was re was repeated again and again until the enzyme which gave the best result was arrived at this method was called directed evolution so that's what she did directed evolution and then the other two scientists smith and winter they applied this technique to create better antibodies so antibodies are proteins that function like targeted missiles they can precisely identify and bind to the viruses or bacteria that infect us so when an antibody attaches to them it sends a signal to aggressive immune cells to destroy the invader so this is how our body fights off infections so the stronger the antibodies that get attached to the target the more effective the cure will be so this directed evolution technique was used by them to develop better drugs to treat autoimmune diseases and even to cure metastatic cancer so these tailored enzymes are now been internationally developed to promote a greener chemical industry produce new materials manufacture sustainable biofuels mitigate diseases and even to save lives so 
at Disney. So these are the details of the Nobel Prizes in Physics, Chemistry and Medicine. So we'll go through the gist which was given up and see whether we understand clearly what have been the Nobel Prizes awarded for this year. So here you can see. So Nobel Prize in Medicine for, the, for discovery of cancer therapy by inhibition of negative immune regulation. So that was Medicine Nobel Prize which we first discussed and that is autoimmune therapy. Second in physics which we discussed was for generating high intensity ultra short optical pulses in laser physics and for chemistry for control of evolution and using it for purposes that bring the greatest benefit to human rights. So these are the three Nobel Prizes which we have discussed in this video. Hope you understood. You can download this PDF from our website as was shown at the beginning of the video. Thank you.